Welcome to week one of my Overwatch League Stage 2 key matches. I can't believe it's been nearly three weeks since the last time I did one of these. It feels so good to bring it back. But before we get straight into things, let me give a quick explanation as to how this series works. So basically what I do is pick out the games I recommend watching every single week, and I usually give a brief explanation as to why I feel that way and give some score predictions as well. And that's pretty much it. But before I start off by taking a look at Thursday's matchups, I thought I'd help set the scene for Stage 2 by telling you some important information that I think is worth knowing. First off, the format of Stage 2 will be very similar to Stage 1. All 20 teams will play 7 games, with the 8 best qualifying for the stage playoffs, and the winners of each division earning the 1 and 2 seeds respectively. In terms of the stage playoff format, it's going to be the exact same as last stage. Quarterfinals matchups will be the first to 3 wins, and then both the semifinals and the grand finals will be the first to 4 wins. The prize pool will also be the exact same, with the winners receiving 200k, and every other team receiving at least 25k. There are some things that are different about this stage though. For one, we'll be getting our first taste of what home games are going to be like when the Fuel and 7 other teams travel to Dallas to participate in the first ever regular season games played outside of the Blizzard Arena. Another noticeable difference between this stage and the last one is the map pool. Some maps from last stage will make a return, but we're also going to see a lot of new maps too. The control maps will be Lijing Tower, Oasis, and Busan. The assault maps consist of Paris, Temple of Anubis, and Hanamura. On Hybrid, you'll see Blizzard World, Eichenwald, and King's Row. And lastly, on Escort, you're going to see Junkertown, Watchpoint Gibraltar, and Rialto. I personally am really excited to see Paris make its debut in the Overwatch League. Junkertown game should be really fun to watch as well. The final thing worth noting about Stage 2 is that it'll be played under Patch 1.34, which means the new Hero Baptiste will be playable. I don't know how much he'll actually be played since Goats is still meta and all, but hopefully we get to see him played on stage at least a little bit. Now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the matchup starting with Thursday. The first game that stands out to me is the Philadelphia Fusion versus the NYXL. The last time these two teams faced off, the Fusion pulled off a massive upset in the Season 1 playoffs. I'm sure the NYXL want to dish out some revenge after something like that happened to them. Losing that series the way they did is a big reason why everyone labels them as chokers, so beating a ghost from your past would surely feel good. The NYXL definitely want to start off the stage with a win after choking in the first round of the Stage 1 playoffs against one of their rivals in the Seoul Dynasty. Pay attention to the off-tank battle in this one. Poco vs Mecco should be very interesting. My prediction for this one is a 3-1 NYXL victory. The other significant game on Thursday in my opinion is the Boston Uprising and Atlanta Rain matchup. There's some big storylines for both sides coming into this one. Boston recently acquired RCK from the Dallas Fuel in a trade for Note. Seeing how RCK fits in with his new team, as well as how much he impacts their in-game performance, is enough of a reason alone to watch this game. But it doesn't end there though. The Rain also made a few noteworthy roster moves that are going to make their team play a whole lot differently moving forward. For one, Dufresne retired, and he was considered by most to be the best player on his team. Seeing how well the Atlanta DPS fill in his shoes is going to be very interesting. The Rain also acquired Baby Bay from the San Francisco Shock, which means we could possibly see Baby Bay get some significant playtime for the first time in what feels like forever, to be honest. And finally, the Rain wrapped up their roster acquisitions by signing the support player Funny Astro on a two way contract which means we could potentially see him play in a game or two this stage. Both teams have some new pieces to mess around with, and it's going to be exciting to see all these new players make debuts on their new teams. With both teams trying to adjust to their lineups, I expect this game to be a struggle. I'm picking Atlanta to win this 1-3-2. The first key match coming into Friday is the Defiance versus the Justice. The main reason this game is important is because Ark is playing his first game on a new team. Ark hasn't gotten any significant playtime yet this season, and last year he was regarded as one of the best support players in the game, so it's going to be fun to watch him play for the entirety of a game again. It's also worth watching this match just so you can see how much of an impact Ark has on his team. Questions on this team's decisiveness and healing ability with Ark in the lineup will hopefully be answered, so you definitely want to tune in. I think the Defiant win this 1-3-1, with the game being closer than the score implies it to be. The next key match will be between the LA Valiant and the San Francisco Shock. I see this as a bounce back type of game for both sides. The Valiants need to try and dig themselves out of a massive hole, and winning your first game of the year against a team as good as the Shock will certainly be a good way to start. The Shock just came off of a heartbreaking loss in the Stage 1 Finals against the Vancouver Titans, and it's clear that their players did not take it well. The Shock need to win this game in order to prove that their shortcomings will not be affecting them moving forward. Dominating a match against one of your rivals would be a really good way to show that you are not letting something like this affect your confidence. You can call me crazy all you want here, but I think the Valiants pull off the upset and win this game 3-1. The final key matchup of Friday will be between the LA Gladiators and the Seoul Dynasty. I expect this game to be fun to watch for three different reasons. For one, this is a rematch of the epic game they played on opening night. You definitely don't want to miss out on it. Two, it's usually a lot of fun watching Fisher play against his former teams. You can just feel the tension in the air every single time, and you can just tell that Fisher wants to win these games really badly. 
The final reason why I recommend watching this match is because both teams have grown a lot since their first meetup. The Gladiators and the Dynasty were still adjusting to their new roster additions at the beginning of Stage 1, so now we get to see a stronger and more organized version of each team. Decay also didn't play the last time due to him being under the age requirement, so we'll see if he fares better than Sherfor did. This game is hard to predict. It really is. It could very easily go either way. I'm picking the Gladiators to win in a 5-map thriller. Moving on to Saturday, the first game I recommend watching is the one between the Boston Uprising and the Toronto Defiant. The last time these two played each other, the Defiant came out on top in what looked to be a pretty easy victory overall. Will Toronto have the same luck this time around, or will the Uprising and their new off-tank RCK get some revenge? Pay attention to the flex support matchup in this one. Neko got the best of aim god last time, and it was a big reason why his team came out on top. I'm picking the Uprising to win this one 3-1. I think Aim God outplays Neko this time around, allowing his team to gain the upper hand. The other key match on Saturday will be between the Hunters and the Eternal. The Hunters are one of the only teams in the league who like to play comps that don't always revolve around goats. And who knows, maybe the Hunters will be daring enough to try out some Baptiste. If there's one team you can count on to surprise you, it's the Hunters. The Eternal also have a small interest factor coming into this one, since they recently parted ways with their head coach Damon. Seeing how they play without him is something worth keeping an eye on. I see the Eternal winning this game 3-1. I've noticed a pattern with the Hunters. The teams they play either have no idea how to stop their wacky comps, or they just get completely shut down. I get the feeling that Paris is going to be one of those teams that has Chengdu's number. And finally, there's Sunday. The game that stands out for me on this day is the one between the Vancouver Titans and the Hangzhou Spark. The Titans are defending champs coming into this stage, and while I don't think this will end up happening, I want to see if the Titans come into this game too confident. We could end up having a really good game if the Titans underestimate their opponents. On the other side of things, this game is looking to be pretty important for the Hangzhou Spark. Stage 1 was an up and down roller coaster filled with inconsistency, so starting off Stage 2 on the right foot with a win against one of the best teams in the league would be a great way to establish some much needed confidence. Keep an eye on the main tank position for the Spark. It seemed like they were moving in a direction that leans towards Gooshway as the starter during the end of Stage 1, but who knows, Nosemite could get the start over him, or maybe the two share some stage time again. I think the Titans will more than likely win this 4-0, but I think the Spark end up making them earn it in what ends up being one of the closest 4-0 sweeps you'll ever see. And with that being said, that's all of them ladies and gentlemen, those are the matches I think are worth watching coming into this week. If you enjoyed today's content, then be sure to like and subscribe, and feel free to let me know what games you're looking forward to watching down in the comment section while you're at it. Thank you all so much for watching today's video, and until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.